This is Axial Spa in a nutshell, a brief overview of axial spondyloarthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. Firstly, what is Axial Spa? Axial Spa is a type of inflammatory arthritis mainly affecting the spine. The area where a muscle attaches to a joint is called the enthesis. In Axial Spa, inflammation occurs here, and we call this enthesitis. So you can get inflammation anywhere where muscles and ligaments attach to bones. The main area this affects is along the whole spine, including the neck, the ribs where they attach to the back and the front, and as you can see on this image, the sacrum, which is highlighted in blue at the base of the spine, connects to the pelvis on either side. These two joints are called the sacroiliac joints, and many people with axial spar experience inflammation here. For some people with axial spar who have prolonged inflammation, the body tries to repair this area by laying down new bone. Over a long period of time, this can lead to joints fusing, but this doesn't happen to everyone with axial spar. Now the terminology has changed a little in recent years, but it is still quite a mouthful. Axial spondyloarthritis, known as axial spar for short, is the umbrella term. Some people are diagnosed with non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. This means they have the symptoms of axial spar, but when they have imaging done, there are no bony changes shown on an x-ray and they may or may not have inflammation shown on the MRI scan. Ankylosing spondylitis, known as AS for short, is the name we use when someone has bone changes visible on an X-ray, and not all people with non-radiographic axial spar will progress to AS. There are many different symptoms of axial spar, and it affects every person differently, but the main symptoms are pain in joints and muscles, joint and muscle stiffness, Fatigue, this is an overwhelming feeling of exhaustion. It can be physical, but many people with axial spar also experience mental fatigue, also known as brain fog. Importantly with axial spar, your symptoms can vary day to day or even hour to hour. As you can see from these photos of me, one day you may wake up and go for a walk on the beach, and another day you may be resting under a blanket with fatigue or pain limiting you. Along with these daily variations, axial spar is a condition that can cause flares. A flare is a period of time where the symptoms are worse. Some people can track their flares and identify triggers or pace activities with rest to avoid overdoing it, but sometimes there can be no trigger at all and a flare will occur out of the blue, knocking you for six. With many of these symptoms, they tend to be worse with rest and better with movement. This is a big difference with mechanical back pain or an injury and is usually why people with axial spar can have difficulty sleeping because of pain or stiffness. Now, axial spar is not just back pain. Some people with axial spar also experience inflammation in other areas of the body. Extra musculoskeletal manifestations is the term healthcare professionals use, and it means the effects of axial spar outside of the muscles, bones and joints in the body. For example, Around a quarter of people with axial spar will have a condition called uveitis or iritis at some point in their life. This is when inflammation occurs in the front part of the eye. This causes a red, very painful eye that's sensitive to light and has blurred vision. It's treated with steroid eye drops, but it's vital that you see an eye doctor, an ophthalmologist, as soon as possible after your symptoms start to start treatment. Axial spar is also linked with inflammatory bowel disease, such as ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. The symptoms can include diarrhoea, stomach cramps, fatigue, loss of appetite, anemia and mouth ulcers. It's important to discuss any of these symptoms with your doctor if you do experience them. As I described earlier, inflammation can occur anywhere where a tendon or ligament attaches to a bone. Because of this, axial spar can cause foot problems, including plantar fasciitis or Achilles problems, leading to swelling, pain and stiffness. Do mention these symptoms to your doctor if you're experiencing them, and you can also see a podiatrist for specialist advice. Around a tenth of people with axial spar develop psoriasis, a condition that causes raised plaques on the skin that can be itchy, flaky, scaly or red. The condition is not infectious, and some people can be unaware they have psoriasis if it affects an area such as the scalp or behind the ears. You can be referred to a dermatologist for personalised advice and further treatment. We have lots more information about these conditions on our website and even have a free downloadable guide to uveitis. As symptoms are linked to inflammation, some medications that help axial spar can also help these conditions, which is another reason why it's important to make your rheumatologist aware if you're experiencing any of these symptoms. 
Sometimes people refer to axial spark as a rare condition, but it's not. It affects 1 in 200 adults in the UK. Despite the myth that it's a male condition, axial spark actually affects the same number of females as males. It's a condition that tends to start when people are younger, often during formative stages of life, where you're trying to study, start a career, or form relationships and start families, with the average age that it starts being 26 years of age. There is a genetic link, and 85 to 90% of people with axial spar carry the HLA B27 gene. However, it is possible to have axial spar without this gene. It's also possible to have the gene and never develop the condition. Despite it being a fairly common condition, a recent study by NAS found that 91% of the population have never heard of axial spar. And unfortunately, it takes an average eight and a half years to be diagnosed. Axial spa is managed with a combination of medications to reduce inflammation, exercise to improve and maintain mobility, and self-care techniques to manage different symptoms. There are three areas where medication can be helpful. Your GP or rheumatologist can prescribe non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, also known as NSAIDs or anti-inflammatories. This includes ibuprofen, diclofenac, etoricoxib and celecoxib. NSAIDs help to dampen down the inflammation that causes the pain, stiffness and other issues. Biologic therapies are prescribed by rheumatologists and can be helpful if someone either doesn't feel enough benefit from NSAIDs or they're experiencing side effects. Biologics aim to stop the body from producing the inflammation in the first place, and we have a free guide to biologic therapy you can download from our website or we can post to you. There are lots of pain relief medications that aim to manage pain, allowing you to become more mobile and active. Exercise is really important as it can help improve and maintain your mobility, reduce joint stiffness, help your posture, and is good for your overall health. It works alongside any medication you're taking and you can approach it in different ways. Personalised exercises from a physiotherapist can be helpful to target any areas you're particularly affected by. One-to-one -one physiotherapy can be particularly helpful when you're new to axial spa, are switching medications or are struggling to manage your symptoms. We also have branches around the UK where you can join in with physio-led group exercises. Exercising in warm water, also known as aquatic physiotherapy or hydrotherapy, is particularly beneficial if you find exercise is aggravating your symptoms or you're building up your activity after a flare. Most importantly, find activities that you enjoy because you'll need to keep moving regularly and sustain it long term. Walking, swimming and Pilates can be great exercises if you're unsure where to begin. And you can also consider exercise classes, walking groups, YouTube videos, getting your friends and family involved, all sorts. Different things work for different people. And in terms of self-care, firstly, if you're new to Axial Spa, it's vital that you give yourself time to understand the condition, to learn how it affects you, and allow time to gradually accept the condition. Managing flare-ups can be quite tricky, but there are lots of tools you can use, and over time you can create your own personal flare toolkit. This is somewhere you can go during a flare to access all the self-care tips and tricks to help you manage your symptoms. We have a video on creating your toolkit on the My AS My Life webpage. You can ask your doctor to make a referral to occupational therapy if you're struggling with things around the house or at work. Making adaptations can help you do more with less pain and less fatigue. Smoking makes axial spa worse and can reduce the effect of biologic therapy. If you're a smoker, do consider asking your doctor to refer you for support in reducing or quitting to help your axial spa. Building a community around you and hearing from other people in a similar situation can really help you cope and give that emotional support too. Do consider joining online groups, joining the NAS Members Forum, or perhaps joining your local branch. I asked people with Axial Spa to share some images of themselves that they would be happy for me to share in this video. Thank you to everyone for sharing these photos with us because it really shows that you can't tell that someone has Axial Spa from looking at them and it affects so many different people. Now I know from experience and from talking to people with Axial Spa every day that at times Axial Spa is an invisible condition. You may not be able to tell someone has it by looking at them, and this can be helpful at times, but also bring its own difficulties. On a day when you're in lots of pain, sometimes the last thing you want to do is talk about it. 
Even if someone is using a mobility aid or has posture changes from axial spasm, it's still difficult to tell from looking at someone how they're feeling. But this brings a challenge that for strangers on the streets or for people who only see you on your good days, they may not really grasp the reality of how axial spa affects you. Remember those stats that although one in 200 people in the UK live with axial spa, 91% of the population have never heard of it. This is why NAS works so hard to raise awareness of axial spa and provide support to everyone with the condition. But while that awareness is growing, remember that there's a whole community of people out there who understand what you're going through and NAS is always here to support you. As I said at the beginning, this really is Axial Spa in a nutshell, and I hope it's helped you understand more about Axial Spa. Please do share with friends, family, colleagues and employers to help them understand too. If you've been watching and thinking these symptoms sound familiar, do head to our symptom checker to see if you may have Axial Spa and get some guidance on seeing your GP if needed. The My AS My Life webpage is packed with information about managing different aspects of Axial Spa and your life. You can find your local branch, download some free guides and learn more about Axial Spa on our website. Thanks so much for listening.